Welcome to Reveland. My name is Esther and I'll be your host today. In this video series, we show you how to be creative, imaginative, inspiring and transform how you think about your music and gigs forever. Let's transform your live show into an immersive experience that is open to everyone. To make sure this video series is accessible to people with various disabilities, we'll use visual descriptions. So before we get started with this tutorial today, I will describe myself. My name is Esther. I have short, dark blonde hair, which is tied back today. I'm wearing gold hoops. I have a navy dress on with white and red stitching. I'm filming in a huge building with a million lights and big wooden beams that you might be able to see against a brick background. And they've put out some gorgeous flowers for me here today. So there's lots of pinks and blues and greens and oranges. And I'm joined by Thomas Gazen of Crank, a band based in Antwerp, and Christo Squire of Perhaps Contraption. Hello, I'm really good, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So Thomas, at Revelin, they talk a lot about going beyond music, making gigs more immersive and taking risks and what does that mean for you as an artist and how has Revelant helped you? Right so um, how did it help us? Well um, they provided us with, with, with like a lot of experts uh, to build like an immersive set so the risk is we're stepping in the unknown. Um, we try like instead of just translating our music live um, we like looking into how to, how to translate an energy um, towards people with dis disabilities as well. So uh, a lot of really interesting sort of, uh, a lot of interesting topics to focus on um, and to expand your experience um, regarding to music and, and the live performance. Christo, what has it meant for you being, considering yourself an experienced creator? What does that mean practically? Practically it's creating, aiming to create emotional responses that are deeper, more powerful, that can move people in a, in a more visceral way and move a, a broader, broader amount of people. Um, for me, that's, that's a key goal in terms of just creating a, a depth of emotional response that you couldn't get from this, this standard musical model. Um, and a, a, a big part of that for me is, is uh, cross arts, multidisciplinary experiences. I think that's really key to it is, um, is, is collaboration and looking at melding various areas of the arts to create this more holistic experience um, that pulls in influences from whatever facets that you want to explore and creating that sort of mixture and synergy and seeing what comes out of it. And so for a band who's listening to this, maybe there's, they're in music college or they're just starting out and they have a very limited budget. What uh, does it mean for a band financially, especially when they're starting out? Yeah, there's, there's greater um, demands from a production point of view, um, because d depending on w what type of experience you're aiming to create, you, um, you need to be thrifty and you need to think outside the box in terms of how you use that budget and where you get your funding. Because of the uh, potential to, to mix with other disciplines, it gives you op different funding opportunities. It means it gives you the opportunity to draw upon different funding bodies, um, approach people that you couldn't approach if you were just in the musical fixed in the musical genre. So I think that that creates a lot of um, new potential in terms of funding if you're if you're collaborating with different artists. Um, but uh, depending on the complexity of your idea, it does require rigorous production and planning and potentially more budget, but also it, it might inspire you to do things that are simple and cheap and effective. It's a process of exploration in terms of how you can perform and deliver things differently. Um, depending on how complex and enormous your ideas or um, that can put different demands on your budget. And if you were talking to another artist, a musician, a band, and they wanted to make their gigs more inclusive and immersive, etc., as we've spoken about, what would be the first thing they should do? How would they start? Think about what you what you want to accomplish and uh, who you want to work with, uh, because like you will eventually have to like really, really, really be able to work in in a team uh, with a lot of people. And, and like, if you wanted to be inclusive as well, you really like need 
you know, people with disabilities, um, all sorts of disabilities. Why? Because it uh, broadens like your your vision and um, your ideas about music and energy translation. Um, so yeah, then like just look at like a place to go to because you obviously really like need a residency or like a big place where you can like work this out and we, where everybody like can come together um and then um yeah it's it's like how how far do you want to push it out you know how how far and how big do you want the production to be and what's the budget and um how can you like get more money and all of these questions so um I think it's really important that if you're an artist uh, or a musician and you just want to play, um, well, go on and look for like a good manager you can work with. Um, obviously, um, someone who's you know in the industry of performing arts, because you really need like um, the right partners and um, the right people to fund your project. So, what have been the personal benefits of making your gigs more immersive and inclusive? What have you both gotten from it? Um, every time now that we go into the studio or that we like begin making music, um, we automatically begin, you know, about like, all right, what's the experience we want to bring and what's the experience we want to make and, and making the music and the sounds and the sound designs around it is just like a small aspect to it. So it really broadens your, like, the, not only the vision of what you try to accomplish, but like the creative, um, the, the creative sort of road to it you know what I mean like the creative process um, so yeah and Christo for you how has it opened uh, up opportunities uh, for you and your collaborators creatively the key way it's benefited me and my creative process is collaborating the core thing is I've, I've learned so much from working with lighting designers with producers uh, with dancers, with creative technologists. Um, the, just that process of collaborating with people who are experts in their particular discipline feeds into my practice. So uh, that's, that's definitely the most personally beneficial um, thing that's come from it because I've had to work so closely with very unique and very talented people that have really upped my game because I've learned say the in and outs of lighting design or uh, working with a deaf actor or designing something that can be rigged quickly and easily in a venue that, um, that has, generates a, a big emotional response. So that, that's one of the ways that it's really upped my game as an artist. Um, and just going back to your question about um, if you had one piece of advice, um, I've actually got two pieces of, of advice for, for people who want to make their live experiences more immersive. The first one is that I think is really important is scalability. And I think approaching, um, approaching any project or venue or funder with perhaps three options um, in terms of budget and technological complexity is, really, is, a, is a really smart idea because it allows longevity for your idea, for, for your show to go forward. So say you have, you have your A budget, which has projection mapping and a children's choir and uh, what, anything you could ever want. That's your moonshot idea, which is gonna cost a lot of money, but you've got your mid, mid range idea and then you've got your cheap idea. Like how could you make this generate a response on a very limited budget? And how would you, what would you adapt in terms of the production to get that? And I think if you're prepared to adapt and compromise uh, your vision, then it's going to allow you to work more. Um, so I think that's that's really important to think about how you can scale um, these immersive ideas for different venues and different budgets, because ultimately it's enough, it's just going to allow you to perform more and connect with more people. Um, I think it's great to have a really strong fixed idea about where you want it to be eventually, but I think you have to be flexible and you have to be realistic about what resources uh, you, you can get to achieve that. And uh, the other thing that I would strongly suggest is whatever your idea is, document it early, really well, really high quality, um, connect with up and coming filmmakers, editors, and get together something, even if it's just 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 
that gives a taster of what your idea is and get that out there because as soon as you have your your idea filmed clearly and beautifully then it makes it so much easier to pitch to uh, like Thomas was saying to funders to venues um, it's one thing having a couple of good paragraphs that sell the idea but if you have 30 seconds or a minute of footage that can um, provide a, a taster of where you're going then that's going to give you a lot more chance to um, connect with the people with the money and the resources and keep developing it. So maybe a, a band who are just you know want to make their music and write their music they're not thinking about you know paperwork and applying for funding and that's probably not the rock and roll dream initially but are you saying just kind of get good at it and learn to use the resources available? I'm, I'm saying if you are if you are naturally drawn to production side of things towards application writing and you're a creative then by all means go for it but if you are if you, if if that's not your strength then find people out there who it is their strength because there's plenty of people out there who are not a musician or a performer who are really good with words and are really good with applications and personally i i spent a lot of time at the start of my career trying to do everything um, and it's only when I kind of let go of that and realize actually there's so many talented people around that all want to make art. And if you can connect with them and draw on everyone's skills, uh, then it's going to make you stronger and allow you to focus on the thing that you're good at. So personally, I would, I would try and find people who are budding producers or grant writers or people who, who want to hone their skills in that area and, and work with them like send them the overview of what you're trying to achieve and they'll um help sculpt it into um a clear application for potential funders so again it's collaboration yeah. if you want to join the revelant community and learn more about thomas crank and uh, perhaps contraption and every everyone involved at revelant you can go to discoverrevelant.today to sign up to the newsletter and for all social media platforms